Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilma again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually going to show you how to export information from visual effects graph and actually access them through a script. So I did that previously with Shader Graph where we have a couple of properties that were exposed. We're going to do the exact same thing, but this time with visual effect graph. And then the script is going to allow us to modify a gradient. It's going to allow us to modify basically the force of the meteors and then other properties that I'm going to be exposing. So let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're actually going to be doing. And so this is a project that I've been creating and working on for the Unity VFX Essentials course. And, and basically, I have three meteors that we're going to be modifying. And some of the properties that, you know, get generated to, to actually make this up are exposed, such as the gradient color that we have in here. You, you can see that we have kind of like a yellow here and then it goes to kind of like an orange, red, and then black. So that's a gradient that is doing that. I also have a force applied to it. That's why you can kind of see that is that all the particles are going up. I also have the same thing for, you know, the stars. And then I have some, you know, transparency when the particles start to disappear. So before I keep going, let me show you the repository that I have for this project, just to make sure that you, you know where it is. Go ahead and go to github.com and then forward slash Dilmer V forward slash Unity VFX Essentials. And I'm going to put this link in the description of this video so that you have it for convenience. And you're more than welcome to download it, do anything that you like with it. If you want to use it in your own project, this is completely open source. So do anything that you like. And you can see that I have the videos that these are, this includes. And I also have a link to the playlist so that you can watch the other videos. All right, so let's go ahead and go back into Unity. So right now I have this scene and what I'm gonna do is I don't wanna modify this scene because you may want to, I want to keep this one intact because this one was made for a previous video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new, we're gonna create a completely new effect, a new set of effects to do this. And also I'm gonna create a new scene. So if we, gotta, if we go to scenes and we look at the one that we have right now, which is meteors, I'm just gonna clone that one. And we're gonna call, call this one meteors with export exported properties. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna double click it to open it up. I'm also gonna go into build settings, make sure that I have that one set as the default scene. Even though we're not gonna build this, I always like to make sure that you know at least one of them is set in the build settings. Okay, now we can close out of that. So the other thing that we could do, we could clone the meteor. And I'm now debating of, or if, I, if we want to do that, I'm actually not going to do that. The reason for that is because even if we expose properties in here that affect the other scene, they're not going to really change the way that the other scene looks like. So we can have one scene with, you know, exposed properties, another scene with exposed properties as well, but they won't be modified unless we modify them. So we're going to just basically leave the meteor so just to give you kind of like a walkthrough of what we have in here, we have basically a main camera. We also have a directional light. I also have, you know, three different meteors. They all have the same visual effects. So you can see that the meteor is assigned to that visual effect, also to this game object visual effect. So what I want to do is I want to export these, basically the properties that make up some of these. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the visual effect graph. So just double click it and here, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on these views. So if you remember, some of these settings were explained in the previous video. So if you haven't watched those, I recommend that you do that. So there's a couple of things that I want to do here. So I want to expose a few properties. The first one that I want to expose is going to be the gradient. Then we're also going to expose the size. And lastly, what I'm going to expose is the intensity. So there's going to be three properties that are going to be exposed that we're going to be able to change through a script. So how do you actually create a property and how we can tie it to the visual effect graph? So it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is actually add properties in here by clicking on the plus symbol. And just keep in mind, look at the type here. So you can see that that's a flow. Then if you look at this one, this is actually a flow. And then this one, you might ask, OK, what is this type? It's actually a gradient. So we're going to have two different, you know, two different floats and then one gradient. So let's go ahead and click on the plus symbol and let's go ahead and focus on the gradient first. 
and we're just going to call it meteor gradient excellent and then the next thing that i'm going to do if you if i go ahead and, and hook this up what is going to happen is going to change the gradient to be that gray color and i don't want to do that because it's going to change the look and feel so anytime you want to add a gradient and you have a gradient already selected you want to make sure that you copy and you create a preset so that we can create a preset that looks exactly like that so to do that i'm going to i'm going to click on the gradient and i'm basically just going to click on on the preset and it's actually already created it looks like i already had it before so we can go ahead and i think i can just right click and delete it so i already have a preset if you don't have this preset already set just click click on new and it's going to create that new preset for you so now that that preset is created which matches this we should be able to go ahead and select that preset in here and you can see that that allow us to copy it and, and that's really really helpful when it comes to copying copying gradients so the other thing that I want to do is I also want to expose this property because right now all we have is a property, but it's not getting exposed. And when I say it's exposed, we want to be able to see it through the inspector. So to do that, it's actually pretty easy. We can just click on expose. And now if we go back into Unity and you can see it's actually already exposed through the parameters. So that, it, that one is good to go. Let's go ahead and go back to the visual effects graph. And you can add a tooltip if you wanted to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that right now. What I'm gonna do is actually drag this and drop it in here. And now you can see this little circle here, and also this little circle here. This is how you can connect them. And now what what's happening is this one is grayed out. I can't change it through here, but I can change it through here. So that means that this property is the one that is basically controlling the gradient on the visual effects graph. So that's great. Now we can see that, you know, if we go here, we can see that that one is still exposed. So the other one that I need to do is the size. So let's go ahead and right and, and click on the plus symbol to add a size. And this one is going to be a flow. So it's going to click on flow. I'm just going to call it meteor size. And if we click on the plus symbol, we can see that this one is going from 0 0.2 and because I know I create the, this graph, you may want to tweak, you know, you may want to change this value and see how it affects it to determine what the default sizes should be. So we know that we were at 0 0.2. So I'm going to just do like, you know, maybe the max is 0.5 and then zero is the minimum. So let's go ahead and just undo that in 0 0.2. So when it comes to those values, we're going to do a range. I'm going to say, okay, from zero to 0 0.5 and it's this one is going to be exposed the other thing that i want to do also is i want to make sure that i set the default value the default value is going to be the fa the value that i have already set because i don't want to change it when i when i connect it so just like i did on the gradient we you want to make sure that you have everything predefined uh, already to begin with otherwise it's going to change the look and feel so we have this one predefined to point point two so we're going to set it to point two I also did a range because I want a slider. So now what I'm gonna do is drag and drop the meteor size. And again, that little circle just connected to the size. Excellent, if we, could, if we look at it, it still looks good. So that means that we're good to go. We haven't changed anything. And then the last one is the intensity. So what I'm gonna do is just click on it again on the plus symbol, flow, and then we can just do intensity. And also prefix it with the, with the type. This case is Meteor. So on the intensity, I think point, we can actually do, let's see. So we got, I'm gonna copy this value so that we don't forget it. And then we're just gonna go up. And I think the intensity could be, we can say five is, is the max and then zero is the minimum. So I'm just gonna paste that value back. And we can say, we just make this a little bigger so you can see it. It's also gonna be a range. And I'm going to resize this so you can see every every property. Resize it here. Awesome. And then, yeah, it's going to be exposed. It's going to be the value that is basically the default. It's going to be that 0.83. So let's just go ahead and add the minimum and the max. Now that we have the minimum and the max, you're going to see the slider. And then the minimum, the default value is actually going to be 0.83. And I think we're good to go with that. Can resize it just a tiny bit so that we can put it put this node so go ahead and drag and drop that and then again the little circle connected with the intensity 
And if we drag this down, everything should be connected just fine. So I think we're good in here. We don't need to make any more changes. If you want to add other properties, it's as easy as just basically clicking on the plus symbol and then connecting it with the type that you want. So for now, three properties for us are fine to demonstrate how this works. So I'm just going to close Visual Effects Graph. And it looks like it's importing and basically making the changes. Now if we go ahead and it's like it's thinking about it. There we go. So now we can see the three different properties getting exposed. Meteor grading is one. Meteor size is the other one. And if we go ahead and change them here, you can see that that's changing. That is changing real time. So let's go ahead and change it back to point 0.2 so that that's the default. So now the question is, how do we actually go in and, and make a change through a script? Because this is great, but if you want to make changes, let's say that you want to add an explosion or you want to, you know, do something in the game that actually controls this through a script. So you want to make sure that you, you can access those. So how do we access those? And that's the question that I had from the very beginning. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go into our project, go into scripts, and I'm going to create a new script. And this one is going to be called, so I'm just going to do a C sharp script. And we can go, we can call it VFX controller. And you can call it any, any anything you like. I think that fits for what we're doing right now. And I'm gonna go back into my hierarchy. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and go into Meteor One. So we can add, we're gonna be adding it to all three of them. So we can select all three of them at the same time. And then just go ahead and click on add component. And here we're gonna add the VFX controller which we just created. You can see that now that should be added to all three. So now any changes we make to one, they're going to be propagated to the other the other two game game objects. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and focus in, in C Sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Open C Sharp Project. You can also double click on the script. That works as well. And just close this. Looks like I already did a test for this, but I want to show you from the very beginning. All right, so now that we have that, Open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the actually the star is the one that I want to remove because I'm going to make changes to the update as well. All right. So some of the effects that we're going to be controller come from a class called Visual Effect. So we need to bring in a new using statement, and that one is going to be we're going to do using Unity Engine and then Experimental and VFX. Excellent. So the other thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to add a new private variable and it's going to be a visual effect. So this is how we can access that visual effect that we have in Unity. If we go back, this is type visual effect. So that is going to be the same class that can access that basically that component. So now that we have that added, I'm just going to create the variable visual effect. And I want this to be serializable because I want to hook it up through the inspector. Excellent. So the next one that I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a float for the intensity. So Meteor Intensity. And this is the other one that we expose. This one is going to be also serializable. And also there's going to be a range. And I'm going to go from 0 to, I believe I did, let me go back to Unity. So the intensity, I did it from, let me wait until this compiles. So we actually did it from 0 to 5. So you can see that. Let's go ahead and go back to 0.59. So, so that one's going to be a range from 0 to 5. Excellent. And we're going to just set it to 0 by, for now. Excellent. And the next thing that we want to do, we want to do the next property, which is going to be the gradient. So it's going to do property. And then this one is going to be of type gradient. And then we can also call it meteor gradient. And this is just going to set be set to null to start. It's always good to initialize them. And we're also going to be serializing that as well. So the last one that we have, let's go ahead and go back to Unity. We need the size. So if we want to control the size of the particles, we also need to add another flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone this one and copy it. And then just going to change this to size. And I have a very bad memory. So let me make sure that I know what the max is. So it's from 0 to 0.5. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And this is going to be a flow, so you're going to need to add a post fix of F. And I think everything else looks great in there. So 
The other thing that I need to do, so now that we have those properties, we need to actually set those in the visual effects graph. So to do that, we're going to do visual effect and then set flow. And the first one that we're going to do is the meteor intensity. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, and it's a capital. So this is going to be the name of the variable of the property that you set in visual effects graph. That one doesn't refer to this value. This is referred to what we did in visual effects graph. And then we're going to do comma, and then it's going to be that value. So we're going to paste that. So let's do that one more time. And this one is going to be for the size. And we're just going to do meteor size. And the last one is going to be the gradient. So if I double click, if you do that notation here, you can see that you have a lot of different options in here for you know set mesh, set, set matrix, set vector two. So these are all the different options that we saw that you could add in, you know, as, as a property in Visual Effect Graph. So this is basically the, the correlation of that. These are all the different methods that allow you to set those properties to a script. All right, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and call set gradient. And this one is going to be Meteor Gradient. And we're going to just copy. This actually should be gradient with a T at the end. You probably saw that before I did. OK, so now that we have that, that's that's good to go. And by the way, this is no, of course, this, you, pro, you probably don't want to do this on every frame. This is just for demonstration purposes. You may want to look at you know, doing an event, and then when that event executes or doing that through through a script, don't do it on every frame because this is going to be very, very bad for performance. For demonstration, it's fine because it shows you exactly which method you need to call to set a property. But for a real time, for a real game, make sure that you do you don't do this on every frame unless you have a condition that you know needs to be met before you can actually call this so for now it's it's okay so, so let's go go ahead and go back into unity and let's wait until the script compiles and we should be able to see so now you can see the script and we have meteor intensity we also have the median gradient and also the meteor the meteor size so what I want to do as well is, if you notice, these, these are starting at 0, 0. And this one is also starting at a different color for the gradient. So what I'm going to do is, if you notice that this value is, is set to 0 0.2, we could do it through code or we could do it through the inspector. I'm, I'm actually just going to do it through the inspector. I'm going to set this one to 0 0.2. The meteor intensity, I'm also going to set it to 0 0.83. And then on the meteor gradient, I'm going to set it to a preset. So now we should have everything you know, set as a default so that we can start from here and then making changes. So then the other thing that I need to do is associate the visual effect with this visual effect. So I'm going to drag it and drop it. And looks like that's good to go. And let's make sure that, so if you notice, this one is associated with the, with the wrong one. So this one needs to be the number one. Let's go ahead and drag and drop it in here. Oops. Let's do that one more time. You can see Meteor underscore one. And then let's do that one again on this one. Looks like that one was already associated. And then lastly, this one. So now each of them have an independent visual effects, which is basically the way that is configured. OK, so now that we have that set up, how do we actually change them? We can go in here and make changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of them, just so you can see the changes happening. And then I'm going to hit Play. And let's wait until everything gets compiled, the project gets compiled. and the particles get set. And looks like we have some changes in here to make. And let me go ahead and go back. And I think I said something incorrectly. I think the meteor size should should be a different value. So let me go ahead and click here. So the meteor size is going to be 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and, yep. That one's going to be 0 0.5. Actually, that's going to be. 0.2 is what we decided that that was going to be. OK, so we're set all of them to 0.2. I think I, I had them in a different order. And then the intensity, we look at the intensity right now, which is set to 0.83. So it's going to select them all. And then the intensity is going to be 0.83. OK, now they, now they should be correct. I, I, I have them in different order. That's why I got confused. So I'm just going to hit play and see what happens and if they look exactly how there we go so they look right now so so now what's cool though is i can actually go ahead and change so if i want to change the intensity 
You can see the intensity is changing on all of them. I don't have to go to Visual Effects Graph to do that. If I want to have a really small one, I could do that. I could also change the size if I want it to be, you know, more of a fine particle. If I want it to be very thick. And there we go. So that's changing. We can also pull the stats so we can see the frames per second. So not, right now it's performing really well. 97 frames per second. Let's see if we change the size, if that impacts. So it impacts performing just a tiny bit as I'm changing them, but not that much. I think it's performing really well. Okay, awesome. Let's go ahead and change the intensity to see how that changes. I have a little, so I'm gonna make them really strong and then probably go a little bit a little bigger. And the other thing that I can do, we can go, we can go a little bit closer on the camera. Because I want to show you how they look. They actually look really cool. And by making changes in real time, you can really get some, you know, when it comes to design, if you see things in real time and you can tweak them in real time, it'll allow you for more, more flexibility. All right, and let's see what happened here. Let's go ahead and, okay. Let's go ahead and click on, I'm gonna basically click on stats so that goes away. So now the other thing that is cool though is I can actually change the, so if I want to change the say, let's say like around this area, I wanted that to be more of a blue color, I can change that, you know, in real time. And we can go, you know, maybe a little darker. I can also go on in this other, other pin that I have there and then make it more, you know, something like that. I think it gives it a really, really cool look. And then lastly, on this one, we could probably go white. I think that will make him stand out. Let's go back into this one, see if we can get, you know, there we go, that looks really cool. And the other thing that you can do is if I want to drag them, say I wanted to make the, the circle, you know, much bigger, I could do that. It, this, is, this is super flexible when it comes to, you know, making changes. I can undo as well. Okay, we can do something like that. I think this blue needs to come out a little bit more. And maybe something like that. There we go. Awesome. And I think I'm gonna, there we go. I think that looks great. Let's add another, I think if we change this guy, get a little more dark. There we go. So, let me just change, there we go, change that a little bit. Let's now go ahead and zoom out. So I'm gonna change the field of view on the camera. You can see that's changing. Let's go ahead and select, it, select them all. Change the size a tiny bit. And I can also change the intensity. So if I wanna make it, you know, bigger. So, so that's really all I wanted to show you today, guys. Basically, just to give you a recap, we went through visual visual effects graph, we exported some of the properties that we had in the graph, such as meteor gradient, meteor size, meteor intensity. These two were floats, this one was a gradient, and then we created a script. And that script was very, was fairly simple. All we had to do is basically bring in the Unity Engine experimental VFX. Then with that, we have the visual effect graph that it's gonna allow us to control, basically access anything that is available through that class. And then what's available through that class is basically all these different methods that allow us to make changes to the properties in real time. And we also created different serialized fields that allow us to make changes to the visual effects. So that's all I'm gonna be showing you today. I'm gonna be continuing. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, make sure that you check out my sponsor who is GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers, also an amazing community and amazing forums where people like you are looking for help and they have expertise that can help you in solving some of those questions. I also started a Patreon page recently to help me out with you know, a video editor. I'm also using that funding to basically improve this community and improve my videos. So thank you very much, guys.